Hello everyone, welcome back to Silver Tears Tarot and of course a great big welcome to those of you who are new. Today we're getting in with one of the questions that kind of came up in yesterday's reading and actually it's going to be a continuation of that third question that we asked. So we asked about um, kind of the what is the energy that you were moving toward or what is moving toward you and in particular maybe to talk a little bit about the soulmate that's coming your direction and so we heard a little bit about it, but here we're here to um, ask a little bit more about this and just kind of understand the energy that is kind of rolling toward you and what you're moving toward um, and like who or what really is heading your direction because we saw some interesting things with it yesterday. Um, it's going to be a general reading as always. So general reading for this collective, it won't resonate with everyone and it shouldn't resonate with everyone. But if it does resonate with you, then by all means, take a look at some of the other videos, other messages that have come through. There might be other things that are useful for you in here as well. Um, so the first thing that we're going to look at is kind of the, it's going to be the emotional and, um, the emotional and energetic backdrop, but it's the energy for where you're headed, not necessarily where you are right this minute. Because um, this is kind of, um, it is kind of the energy, it's forward looking. So thinking about not taking everything that comes your direction, we've got the fool in reverse. Now, I'm not saying that um, you're unwilling to move into a new direction, just that you're not necessarily willing to take everything that comes your way. And we've seen in some of the recent readings, um, advice not to take everything that comes your way. Advice to be somewhat discerning, don't make snap decisions, but um, also don't necessarily take everything that comes your way. That was something that's been coming up. So let's see. Where's the top one? Here we go. We've got the one of hedgehogs. This is the door opening. There's This is a door of development, but also it's something that kind of, it's a change in you that it goes hand in hand with development, but it has you kind of turning into something a little bit different from what you've ever been before. It's a good change. It's a good change. Three of spears, utilizing... Um, so I don't get upset when you see the three of spears right off the bat because here it's um, it is still the three of spears like the three of swords or that um, that air energy. But really, this is about recognizing something that you've lived through that you've worked through, but that has kind of made you stronger. It's something that has made you stronger and you recognizing it and being able to hearken back to this and say, here is a place where I'm able to open this door because of this situation that I went through that made me stronger. Um, it's also part of the reason that you don't jump into everything that you see. So there is, I got the sense in yesterday's reading, you were going to hear from your person and that there was a chance you were going to look at it and maybe make a different choice than you might have made in the past. Um, let's see. This I think we've got one turned over. Mm, it's real. Okay. I didn't see it turn over. I thought maybe it was somehow a vestige of a different time that I utilized the cards, but it's right. So the four of wands here is about steadiness. It's about steady energy and it's about you moving forward in steady energy. This decision to not jump into everything is a completely valid decision um, or it's a well-measured decision. You recognize that you still have some work to do in the area of healing around the big three. So, namely fear of abandonment and fear of rejection, although there is definitely some of that fear of betrayal in there rounding out the big three. Um, there is a sense of you recognizing that you are still able to get triggered in some of these areas, but also realizing that you've made some good progress here. Um, <clears throat> something standing in the way as far as a third party energy, but it seems like it has kind of almost a political sort of feel to it. It's got, and by political, I, it could also be social in that it's within a social group or it's within, um, some type of group, but there's something that's happening here, um, that is, 
not just changing things for you, but is changing things across a group. So something to keep in mind, sometimes people um, respond a little bit differently when they're being impacted socially as well. So if you've got somebody, if you're interacting with someone who is being impacted socially, then there may be some, you may see some behaviors and have to go back and say, wait a minute, I might be able to assign that to something um, associated with that social change or that political change. We have the, um, the Eight of Pentacles in reverse and the Page of Swords both in reverse. So Page of Swords has um, a little bit of that, I'm not going to jump into everything that I that comes across my path sort of feeling, but it also has a sense of fear to it. It's associated with this Eight of Pentacles, which almost comes out kind of like a lack of confidence, but really it's feeling that you're not emotionally up to something. You haven't done something right. There's something about a forgiveness that you've not yet been able to give yourself. This is an honorable mention, so I'm not going to keep this one out, but it does need to be said. Um, so there's something where you need to forgive yourself a little bit more about something. And it's a place where you've already started this process and it's just been very difficult. Look for an opportunity to express emotion, but then when you when you have the opportunity to do so, maybe it's just not necessarily going to come. So this feels a little bit like your person. You are finally confronted with an opportunity with your person and they they say something or they do something we know that when they reach out to you they leave something out and it creates a misunderstanding and i get the sense that you it's a turn off to you i get the sense that it's kind of a turn off and you say you know what i'm i'm not so sure that i'm going to respond to this in the way that i maybe always have um and it has to do with it being too easy to get triggered and feeling like um not having that emotional self-mastery. I think you're shortchanging yourself, honestly, um, but there's that fear and that is difficult to talk yourself out of. Um, that's kind of an important, that's an important piece of something that happens there. So this is not a new soulmate activity so much as somebody that you already know. Um, I feel like one turned over. Yeah, here it is. Oh, we do get that justice card back. So I felt like it was an honorable mention and I mentioned that um, there's a place in here that forgiveness is not coming through, but it wants to be part of the reading. So it's coming back out like this. Um, yeah, there's something about forgiveness that needs to happen for you that maybe you haven't had, you haven't been able to truly get all the way there with yourself. But I do get the sense that it's something that you've been working on. So it's something that you're aware of. It's not going to come at you out of the blue. Something that you're aware of. I don't think it's around your person, but I think that it is exacerbated by memories of your person for some reason. I don't know that it's associated, but something about it kind of makes it even worse. It has that even worse sense. Um, we have the Seven of Pentacles in reverse. There's some place that you are going to feel like you've not properly, um, like you've not invested in yourself in some way and you're going to do that. You've always wanted to learn how to play an instrument, for example, and you've never done it. You've failed to make that investment. And so here you are trying to figure out how to juggle, you know, playing an instrument with the rest of your life. It's that kind of energy. So you determine there's a hole here and you're all in the business of filling gaps like that. So that's part of, that's a happy little energy there. I don't think there's anything bad about that. It's practical. Um, it's a little bit busy. Like it feels a little bit busy. You could get to a place where you're a bit overloaded or burdened. Like we see here with the 10 of wands, you do tend toward that, but you also have a tendency to be able to take it for a little bit longer. So because you're talking about doing something that you defined as a gap and that's what you're trying to add in, you're capable of maybe doing it for a little bit longer or doing a little bit more of it, um, taking it for a little bit longer. But be aware that a, a burden is a burden. So even if it's a happy burden and one that you're happy to bear, um, just be aware that you're probably going to need a break sometimes. Um, and the Six of Swords, this is an extraordinary ability to give yourself that break. So I think there's a lot of positivity in that. Um, and I think we may, uh, we got one more card at least. Let's see here. Sometimes I feel like I'm getting to the end of it. Um, we've got the Four of Pentacles in the reverse. This is about being able to let something go, but it's something that maybe you've wanted to let go for some time and just kind of haven't had the ability to do so. 
this is the ability or this is finding it within yourself to actually be able to let go. So you've got some pretty strong, um, solid foundation, having the ability to let go kind of energy. There is this um, a little bit of fear, a lack of forgiveness, um, but you're also going to be opening a door and using some of what you've had and what you've experienced in the past to move you to the best new place. So I feel like ultimately this is good energy that you're moving into, um, but let's learn a little bit more about it. Every once in a while, we get the sense of fear. We see the Ten of Cups lesson, you know, something like that. And so the Ten of Cups lesson is tough because it's all about what are you going to do when you run across something that actually matters to you and is actually very important. Um, what's under here? So we've got the Temperance card in the reverse. You have something come in your way that makes you really question things to the point where... Your balance is threatened, like your your emotional day to day balance is threatened, um, and it's it reminds me again of something that you have a hard time forgiving yourself for. We've got the page of hedgehogs. That's earth energy, um, but it's in the reverse. So there's something here about it's almost like um, refusing to see what's in front of you, refusing to see what's in front of you because of. Um, it, this is about that Ten of Cups lesson. Honestly, this is about what do you do when something seems like it's too good to be true? Um, you're, so you're going to be able to make the best of this, but it's going to, it may feel a little bit rocky until you get there. I, I get, again, a sense of everything ends up being fine. This stability that we see over here, this Four of Wands stability shows up again here in the Four of Flowers. And so it feels like even though things might be a little bit disorienting to you as you're starting to take on something new, um, you you do fine with it. So over here, remember, we had you feeling like there was a gap, something that you needed to invest in, a place maybe you hadn't invested before that you now decide to invest. And remember yesterday, we saw that there was some sort of association between this new place that you go start to put some energy which could be you know in this example playing an instrument but it could be writing a book it could be whatever it is there's something that you start putting um some energy into and this person is somehow this person this soulmate that's coming your direction is somehow associated with it but you've got the page of pentacles here in reverse twice page of hedgehogs page of pentacles this is that sense of not learning and not being open to learning as quickly as much as maybe is needed and so something doesn't flow as quickly you don't end up um you can feel the like the the recognition the soul recognition with this person but you don't feel ready to move forward and it's not even you don't even feel like you're in a hurry to figure it out it's more a matter of yes i see that i acknowledge it i respect it i'm moving over here right now and I'm not going to focus on it you know um, but it's going to come back and want to get your attention you're going to <sighs> okay so this reminds me a little bit of something I say about your person sometimes all right when I talk about how when they first manifested you in and you are manifesting the soulmate in by the way when you manifest when your person manifested you in they were working on something in their situation that was healing to them, but they were having a hard time as they worked through it because um, it's, a, it's a change in their values that they were brought up with that they don't feel super comfortable with. And so they kind of, they were trying to ease into it. And honestly, it was a little too much for them. So they were trying to sweep it under the rug. Um, then you came along, re-triggered them in a lot of these same ways, and they were forced to um, reconsider it. So you've got something similar going on here where you've got something that you're maybe not super open to the lesson and you're being a little resistant to it. You're going to figure out exactly where that healing still needs to take place. And remember over here, we saw the three of swords or the, um, the three of spears, which was about not necessarily feeling heartbreak, but being able to register. Here's where heartbreak has been. And here's some of what I've learned from it. Here we have that three of swords again. And it's a matter of you're very much going to remember where these lessons have come from for you. 
Um, you're also going to be able to compare and contrast. You're going to be able to see what your happiness is and you're going to be able to figure out how a road to get there. So um, I don't see the magician card here, but I feel it. There's a sense of being able to manifest your own positive um, outcomes and it's manifestation in harmony with the universe. So it's not even just like strong arming your way through it. But with the six of wands, it's a feeling of you having really worked for this, like you've worked for this to get to a place where you're able to move towards your happiness. And you go from fear to trusting yourself and your situation fairly quickly here. Um, and the thing is that not, some of these soulmates, and I've said this multiple times here in the last few readings. Um, when we talk about this soulmate, I say, oh, I'm not really sure if it's a romantic situation or not, because in some cases it isn't. But in some cases, it absolutely is. Um, I get the sense also that some of you end up like being with this person and still reconciling with your person that you've been getting readings about. And it is entirely possible to have multiple soulmates. This is one of the questions that came to me um, and, you know, I get the question sometimes, somebody asked me about what you, what do you do when you're not sure anymore who your person is, um, when you're, when you're feeling just kind of overly confused about it. Um, one person had asked me, you know, is watching videos the right way to go for me? And for those people, I would say it totally depends, you know, and it depends on the problem that you're solving and it depends on how things are hitting you. So for me, um, I am in a very different place on the timeline, and yet I still watch a few readers, although not very many. I mostly stuck with the ones who had made my healing a priority for the video, so that that last question we usually ask in these readings, um, I mean in extended readings, anything could happen, but these YouTube readings, we typically like to ask um, to ensure this divine feminine, that's most of you, has some guidance, you know, and for me, that's what stuck. It's why I'm still watching some of those videos. Um, so my decisions around my divine masculine are not really fluctuating so much at this point, but I always want to be sure that I am at least listening for the opportunities that I can take to make the healing path better, you know. I mean, there's a sense of it doesn't matter which soulmate it is that you're working on. There are still going to be some pieces that could potentially be of value for you here, particularly because you're moving toward your happiness and that can take any number of forms. In some cases, fairly unorthodox forms. You could be meeting a new soulmate that you end up being with. You could still be working through, and I get the sense this is not uncommon in this in this collective that you're going to meet somebody and you're going to be with them and you're still going to work through things with this this person that you've been working with and that you have multiple soulmates going on so by all means we're not going to make the assumption that we know who these messages are about in those cases um but i am going to refer to them as your person because even as um there's a there's a special energy that goes along with this soulmate that you've been working through and working with and learning the lessons with even if um if you're to run across another soulmate you're still going to have a very special bond um with that one but moving toward happiness does not necessarily mean moving back toward this old soulmate could be moving toward something a little bit new you definitely still have some things to work through here with the devil card though and you also got the tiny elephants card so this is the 79th card in this deck uh, most tarot decks are 78 cards this one is 79 it has the end the extra tiny elephants card and this one's about perspective and it's about um it reminds me of in this context like when you have someone who's brand new to the workforce versus someone who's been in lots of different types of jobs at different types of levels and they turn to the person who is relatively new in the workforce and say, I think what we're seeing here is a difference in perspective because I've been where you are, but you haven't yet been where I am. You know, um, there's a lot of sense of being in different places perspective wise and really kind of being able to feel it i get that with the tiny elephants card and with the devil card all i can say is there continue to be lessons to learn there's not necessarily a huge proclivity toward learning those lessons at this time or a tendency to want to learn those lessons at this time but just rest assured 
they're still going to be here. You are encouraged to go headlong into your future the way it feels like you're going to do here. But just know you're going to keep learning lessons. That's not a bad thing. The fact that it throws you off balance a little is also not a bad thing. I'm curious to understand kind of maybe what happens here. If that doesn't come out here, we'll ask it when we get into the extended. Um, but I do see you... Again, we saw this come out yesterday, not making rash decisions with this Queen of Swords in reverse, not moving quickly. With this Page of Chalices, here is where, like you've had a little bit of a, how can I put this? It's been like a little bit of a getting burned. You've gotten burned a little bit from reaching out to this soulmate that you've been dealing with and either not receiving any communication at all, or it's just really subpar communication. They're not able to get the communication out, things like that. Um, and you've kind of, you've gotten a little bit burned and maybe you get a little bit of a feeling like you don't always want to reach out because of that. This is where you get over it. I feel like in this situation with this new person who's coming in, you are going to get to a place where you're much more comfortable. This is why it can end up being somebody that you actually get to be with. With the Nine of Pentacles here, this is where you, you kind of get to be yourself. You get to have... Not, not everything isn't going to be perfect. You don't even feel like everything does have to be perfect, but it's going to bring you a sense of happiness and wholeness um, that maybe you've really been lacking. And I feel like this world card is part of it as well. Um, the magician is finally coming out. It still has that sense of um, really just you being able to um, co-manifest with the universe, like I was saying before. It's a beautiful energy that comes out with this, but it's something that you build, but only because you feel like you have the support of this person and the universe. And I feel like wherever it is that you um, you start to invest over here, whether it's writing a book or playing an instrument or learning, whatever it is, whatever it is that you decide to do that you thought was a gap that you kind of jump into functions as a catalyst, not only for getting closer to this person and meeting this person, but also for some of the healing that you're doing that is really of a cathartic uh, variety. So we are going to try to true to form. We're going to get into you here in this last bit and we'll look at what it is that you need to be focusing on given what else has come out on this table. Although I will say um, when we get into the extended, we need to look a little bit more at how this actually happens. So this is really neat um, information maybe that has come out about you and this soulmate and kind of the energy that you're moving into. Very positive energy, but let's see where you're focusing now and then we'll get a little bit more into, okay, so what can you actually do? Um, expect to happen can we learn a little bit more about that so your area of focus ooh, what was that i saw something turn over there transformation no big surprise there this is a very transformational kind of energy for you honestly there's a lot that happens here um the hermit going inside and allowing for that internal transformation, that internal um, focus, if you will. We also have the five of hedgehogs, which is, okay, so this is transformation, learning about yourself. You've got a little bit of a resistance to the learning, partially because of the type of healing that you still have to do. So this is that five of pentacles, kind of, or five of hedgehogs in this case. It's still... Um, it's still that uh, earth energy. It's the same kind of thing. The five of hedgehogs, five of pentacles is all about the big three. It's all about having, um, and like we saw it over here, it's about that fear of rejection and abandonment and betrayal and about confronting it and transforming out of it, um, but doing so in a very intentional way. Like you really... I feel like you get into this and you very thoroughly solve some issues. You have decisions to make. I feel like the way that your person, your soulmate that you have been getting readings about, the way that they come back to you, 
is an important, it, it ends up being an important decision that you have to make, but you're in every way ready to do this and you are developed into the person that you need to be to be able to say, I'm okay with reconciling with you, but I'm busy with this right now or whatever your version of it ends up being. Because I feel like there is something here that makes you say, hold on, I'm not going to accept this the quite the way that it came in. I've seen that a couple times here in this reading. There's a confidence within you um, that really just kind of, it rings true after the lessons that you've, that you've learned, um, so far in this experience. And so with the seven of wands, we got the seven of wands. That's, it's like a momentum as well. It's not just, um, not just a confidence with the momentum and the realization that you're going to continue going down this road, going to be able to continue I mean, it's one thing when you think about it you know, on an intellectual level, like, of course, you're going to continue to have lessons and that's going to be a part of how this works. But then when you look at it and you say, wait, I'm like, there's a, there's a, you just have an assumption that you kind of know how to work through things. And honestly, it's, that's a huge part of your success is just knowing that you're going to be successful. Also, this is a big part. So lowering those that resistance and just kind of allowing yourself to get down to business, acknowledge who you are, don't spend too much time on the ego. Knight of Wands is your passion to move forward. And you have a lot of it, but you've got to kind of uncover it and point it in a right direction. Because I think a lot of your passion has been pointed towards your person for a while here. But with this new door opening for you and with the transformation, so we've got the transformation, let's the equivalent of the death card in this deck, and then we've got the tower over here that feels awfully transformative also. Sometimes the tower is all about a directional change because of something that got too uncomfortable, and that is absolutely going to be the case. But I think what's more important here is the transformation that's implied. The Ace of Pentacles, though, the new the new opportunity that sits outside of the wall that you've been in. This is all about, we've got the Nine of Wands breaking down the wall. Ace of Pentacles opening the door in the wall that lets you out. The Tower, all about transforming out of a situation that may involve some kind of, um, like I was saying, it might not be entirely comfortable but it, it really, I feel like there's a lot of positivity to this. And all of a sudden, there's a lot more flexibility in you and just options for you. A lot more options open themselves to you. And so you've got this Knight of Wands. You also have this Chariot energy, which can only be described as straight ahead and nothing is going to stop you kind of energy. When you decide to unleash that, it is pretty much a done deal. Um, and yet you're going to totally get hung up. There's something that gets complicated here and becomes um, like it becomes something for you to truly work through. And so it's a good thing that you've managed to kind of refocus some of your energy that you had been focusing around your person because you need the clarity when this happens. You've got something that's basically a delay between you and where you're where you know you want to be headed. Um, but you're incredibly clear-minded about it. With the Eight of Swords here, you don't spend a lot of time deliberating about where you want to go or what you want to do. This is an incredibly clean energy, and you have absolutely no issues with, again, with this Hermit energy going in there and really kind of just doing the thinking that has to happen um, to get you to the right place. You're also not afraid to use the past and the roadmap from the past, the roadmap that you've been able to put together because of your experiences from the past. Um, this is part of what I was seeing over here with this, like this Three of Spears energy, which later becomes the Three of Swords energy. And it's being able to use what has happened to you in the past, even if what happened to you in the past was not particularly comfortable. Um, so we're going to go ahead and go into the extended this is an interesting one. We're going to jump in and the first thing that we're going to ask is like what you can expect and we're just going to let the reading kind of grow from there because I feel like that's where this one needs to start. So that's what we'll do. The link to the um, extended reading is down in the, um, it's in the description below this video. If you want to go there with me, I look forward to seeing you there. Otherwise, I will see you again tomorrow.